Hi, I'm David from Levika Photography, and today I am bringing you the uh, flagship APS-C size sensor lineup. And we're doing 24 megapixels today, so that's why you don't see Canon here, because they stop at 20. Uh, but I did want to talk about the flagship cameras from each manufacturer. So we've got the best of the best 24 megapixel APS-C size cameras here. All right, so where do we start here? This is kind of a tough call. Let me just give you the rundown. Okay, so we got the Pentax K3, and this is a weather sealed body. Uh, it does eight frames per second, and records full HD. Has a standard flat screen on the back. The D7100, which I am very familiar with, uh, used this camera for years. And this is Nikon's flagship DSLR APS-C size. And uh, again, flat screen, you know, nothing too exciting about it, just rock solid, weatherproof body. And then the new uh, Sony A77 Mark II, uh, flat, uh, actually articulating screen. So this screen can actually come out and flip hmm, this way all the way over. And that I actually kind of like. And this is also a weather sealed body. And uh, out of all of these, this one actually does 24 frames per second, or sorry, 12 frames per second. Uh, this one does seven, this one does eight. And then I also threw in the A6000 because it's the 24 megapixel APS-C size mirrorless camera, and it's the only one out there like it. And this one does 11.6 frames per second, so pretty close to each other. You know, you can't really go wrong. Um, so, image quality wise. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. We've been doing some research, and a lot of people really just, you know, went crazy over my uh, Sony A6000 D7100 comparison because of the fact that uh, I uh, got the sensor wrong because I said this was a Sony sensor, when it's actually a Toshiba, Toshiba sensor. But after doing more research into it, it, it looks like it's actually a Sony-designed sensor just manufactured by Toshiba. And the crazy thing is, these are all that same sensor, roughly. Uh, these two are obviously Sony sensors, made by Sony. These two are the Toshiba sensors, uh, but with a Sony design. So image quality wise, when you shoot in RAW, these are actually all identical. I, you can't really tell the difference. Uh, so the physical image quality at ISO 100 is, there's zero difference between all four of these. There isn't one that's better than the other. Now when you bring in high ISOs and noise reduction, that actually kind of changes the game just a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, the A77 II is definitely a lot stronger uh, than the Pentax. Actually, the Pentax is probably the low in the group when it comes to high ISO. Uh, so, you know, realistically, let's let's look at these cameras individually. Okay, so let's talk about the Pentax first. The K. Now, this is a hardcore weatherproof design. Now, Pentax uh, is kind of an underdog. A lot of people don't really hear about them. Uh, this one's capable of doing the standard movie modes, <clears throat> just like the Sony and Nikon cameras, uh, you know, records in full HD, 60 frames per second. Um, there are a few minor issues uh, with this camera, but overall, uh, the consensus is that it's a phenomenal camera. You can't really go wrong with it. Now, the current features that are coming out in the industry <clears throat> are things like peak focusing. This has it. Uh, in-camera stabilization, this totally has it. Uh, what this doesn't have is a screen that pops out, which is kind of a bummer. And what this does have is a very bizarre menu system. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I actually kind of like it. You know, for me, I had no problems running around all over in the camera uh, trying to figure out, you know, the way it worked. It literally only took me just a few minutes. So that I thought was very cool. Uh, it does share a couple of the same problems that the Sony's have, like they painted their hot shoe. Now, again, I've had some issues trying to put 
uh, just some general flashes on this thing trying to get it to shoot. Now, to me, what's mission critical in photography is to be able to control lighting. Now, Pentax in the past has actually been very good about <clears throat> just kind of an open flash support. You know, they didn't really lock things down. But on this camera, they did. And what that means is it only shoots at 1 60th of a second with a off-brand flash, whether it's on or off the camera. It doesn't really matter which one it is. And that's kind of a bummer. Um, but what you do have is an on-camera flash that actually seems to work pretty well. So anyway, uh, this you're actually able to trigger and, and do higher sync speeds uh, using another flash in S1, but again, you can't direct the light. Uh, so it, it kind of struggles there. But then camera stabilization, uh, the fact that Pentax in general makes some pretty good lenses, although they only have a few that are outstanding. Uh, but what I do like about these guys is their actual support. Like if I have a question about this, if I really hunt and peck, I can actually get a hold of an engineer that worked on this. Uh, you can't do that with another camera manufacturer at all. It's because they're a smaller company and uh, you know they're owned by Rykoff and they have a US office here and people actually pick up the phones, which is kind of nice. You know, it's, it's a rarity. The issues with this camera, just so you guys know right off the bat, now these are all very similar, but this one, uh, the JPEG quality suffers a little bit. And the JPEG images are slightly oversaturated. You don't have very good uh, manual movie control, meaning if you have to adjust the f-stop, or the aperture, you have to stop recording to do that and then start recording again. And it only records audio and mono. Uh, those are, and the fact that it doesn't have a pop-out screen, because I really like the pop-out screen feature. But those are really the only issues that I see with this camera. Now, all of those can probably be fixed in software. And the cool thing about Pentax is if you actually look at their support for this particular camera, they come out with a software update for it every couple of months to add more functionality to it. So for them, I say very cool, uh, but the only problem is you guys are wondering if I'm ever gonna use this camera. Unfortunately, probably not, because I use, I have piles and piles of ma manual focus lenses, and they don't adapt very well to this camera. They do adapt, there's adapters out there, but they have what they call a, uh, a magnifier that uh, it's like the old Canon FD uh, to uh, Canon EOS adapter where it has a glass element in there and that causes back reflection. So, you know, realistically, I'll probably never get to use one of these, but I really do like this camera. I think it's very cool, really solidly well built. And after talking to uh, the people here at Tempe Camera, they have yet to see any of these come back for repairs. So. You know, that, that to me just says that, you know, these are really rock solid. Can't go wrong with it. Uh, but I just don't own any Pentax lenses. Uh, Sigma also makes lenses for this camera, which is good. So you've got alternative options. But as far as true third-party support goes, it kind of struggles because they're such a small manufacturer. But they are an extremely well built. Okay, next up in our lineup is the Nikon D7100. And you guys know very well that I, I know this camera like the back of my hand. I mean, this thing is just a workhorse. And I've used these for a couple of years, which also means that, you know, the D7200, is that the next model that might come out? I don't know, but they are due for an upgrade. Uh, now, Nikon, as a cam camera manufacturer, is very, how should I put this, conservative as to how they approach things. Now. What the D7100 does is it gives you excellent flash support. Um, it's kind of slow compared to our other cameras here. This is the slowest in the bunch at seven frames per second. Uh, the autofocus uh, lags far behind everybody else as well because it's a slightly older system. It still does okay. Uh, there's really no problems with it. Uh, one thing I wish it did have was the pop-out screen. Uh, JPEG quality control and uh, high ISO shooting are excellent on this camera. I've never had an issue with that. Uh, my biggest gripe with this camera was the buffer. And if you shoot uh, a bunch of RAW files, it will fill the buffer up 
almost immediately, and then it takes forever for it to clear. Now, one way to get around that is to shoot in JPEG, but I prefer to shoot only in RAW. So that is an issue that you can't really overcome, and that becomes very problematic. But what this does have is excellent audio control and movie mode, and uh, <clears throat> movie recording on this is excellent. I've made several videos with these and always been really happy with them. Uh, it has uh, GPS support, Wi-Fi support, although it's not built into the camera. Uh, it has excellent audio playback. Out of all these cameras, it has the best audio playback. Uh, really good optical viewfinder, along with the Pentax. Uh, so those are the only major issues that I have with it. Uh, it's, you can use Nikon AI glass, which I used to use for an ever a day. If you guys don't know this about this camera, it's got this little slide ring here, and that's actually for the old Nikon manual lenses. That way, if you have an AI lens, it'll tell you what f-stop you're at and allow you to adjust it within the camera. So that, to me, is very cool. Uh, just really a good camera, but the buffer problem makes it an issue. I use these in the studio. I never had a problem, but it is the heaviest out of all these two. And I mean this thing is heavy compared to the rest of them. Uh, you know, it weighs the most, um, but it does have excellent flash support. Uh, with this, you can go 320th of a second, no problem. High speed sync, you can achieve all the way through the entire round of shutter speeds. The shutter speeds go up very high. Uh, so, you know, it's a rock solid camera. It just feels like it's dated because it doesn't have the built in features that a lot of the other cameras have you guys about the a77 II. Now, you know, while we have these two other great cameras here, uh, these don't have articulating screens, uh, you know, they don't, they're not that fast, you know, 8 frames per second, 7 frames per second. Uh, and then there's this Sony here, which is insanely fast, 12 frames per second. Uh, it is on par with the uh, A6000 sitting right here. So it has the pop-out screen, and I love this screen. Uh, this body is also weatherproof uh, and freeze-proof, apparently. And it does have an excellent viewfinder on it that I really, really like. It's five-axis image stabilization built into the camera, meaning any lens that you put on here is automatically stabilized and it works really well. Actually, it works pretty much on par with the a77 II. And, uh, you know, movie recording mode, this thing records in stereo, it does everything that you want it to. The only thing is it kind of over-processes JPEGs just like the Sony a6000 and everything else. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, will you see me using one of these? Uh, unfortunately, probably not, because you, get, you guys know how much I, I love my legacy glass. And uh, I can't mount it on here without an adapter that has an element in it, and that causes problems. So uh, a great camera, although it is heavier than I'm used to now, because I'm used to shooting these mirrorless cameras, it feels like a tank. But man, this thing has got every option in the, on the planet, and it's just phenomenal. So, you know, take a serious look at these, because, you know, there's nothing wrong with alpha lenses, especially if you get stuff that's Zeiss glass. Now, let me talk really quick about Zeiss glass. When you see a Sony lens that has the Carl Zeiss label on it, uh, I want you guys to keep in mind that it is not actually built by Carl Zeiss. You know, the elements may be designed by Carl Zeiss, uh, but they're not actually built by them. And that's good in a very good way because Carl Zeiss autofocus lenses really suck for autofocusing. And they're just, they're noisy, they're jittery, uh, there's all kinds of issues. They're very sharp, of course, uh, that's what you're paying for. But with the Sony version of the Carl Zeiss, it's the Zeiss design manufactured by Sony with Sony's autofocus system, so it's much quieter, smoother, definitely the way to go. And with that being said, that brings me to our last camera in the roundup. You guys know I love this little thing. Why do I love this little thing? Because these cameras, 
everything that they do, this can do seriously. That's how good this tiny little camera is. And I don't care about uh, Sony's support, and the reason why is because these cameras are so cheap that if I break one, all I'm going to do is take it apart on YouTube and show you guys what's inside it when I break it. You know, it, I really, because I've already made my money shooting with this camera. I got all that money back a long time ago. So, uh, you know, at half the price of these, I just love this thing. Now, it is not weatherproof by any means. It has the worst optical viewfinder ever. And, uh, you know, the microphone support on it, it's only on auto for, you know, uh, gain, which is really kind of a bummer. And like I said before, the remote switch uh, lag is, you know, it lags quite a bit. But again, but yet so fast, it has a buffer that doesn't really overload itself. And it's ultra fast as far as shooting goes. Uh, I can pretty much use this in every situation. And the video recording on it, even though the audio recording isn't all that great, the video recording is on par with everything else that Sony makes. Uh, I wish it had a little better codec, but there's nothing I can do about that. And, you know, I think that the, the AVCD or HV, the AVCHD Kodak is actually very decent. And uh, I use it all the time in these videos that you're watching right now. So uh, there's our roundup. And, you know, this is something for you guys to look at. Now, the other thing about the A6000 is I can take lenses from all of these cameras and shove them on here and use it. It doesn't matter. And, you know, you can adapt anything to this little tiny body. And, you know, even though this is the future, uh, this is where professional photographers think they should be because they want a tank. They want to carry around, you know, a good five pound weight because they want to feel it every day. I never could understand that. Uh, but realistically, these are all great cameras. You know, you can't go wrong if you own them. But the thing is, all of these, including this one right here, I'll just park it right here, they all have the same image quality. They all have the same sensor design. Uh, you know, and they're all fast, and they all record great movies. You can't go wrong. The only problem is, this one probably has the best support, but this one has the best uh, aftermarket support for adding on equipment. But these are just stupid fast. So it depends on what you guys want, you know? So I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, other than that, we'll talk to you guys later. See you next time.